We've seen this before in Division II. Menominee and Brookfield Central battled for the state title in 1999. It was a grudge match controlled by the Indians, but the Lancers wouldn't go down easy, falling just short in the end. Brookfield Central, Menominee, the rematch is next. Stadium in Madison. It's the Division II WIAA Football Championship. Menominee and Brookfield Central. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fox Sports Net. Nice to have you with us this afternoon, along with Jamie Vanderbilt. I'm Craig Kishan as our marathon high school football championships continue here on Fox Sports Net. In Division II, Jamie, we've seen these teams before, all the way back to 1999, as we saw off the top where Menominee came away with the winner. What's this one all about? Well, not any more, not any of the same players, but they all have the memories of it, watching their older brothers play. The coaches, I'm sure, are driving this home, and Brookfield Central came up just shy of that end zone at the end of the game. All right, let's see how these two teams made it all the way to the state championship here in Madison, going back to the quarters, Menominee over Rice Lake. They also defeated Germantown in the semifinals, where Brookfield Central took care of Franklin and just get by a field goal ahead of Verona in the semis. So they'll meet here in the Division II state championship game. And Brookfield Central has a key player that we're going to keep an eye on, and we really have to keep an eye on this guy because he wears two different uniforms, Joe Thomas. Uh, starting out number 61, you see him in the whites. He'll start on the line, switching uniform numbers to play tight end and perhaps even a third uniform before we're done. More on that next. must have been some cookies you left, Santa. I didn't leave no cookies. I left them cheese. Ah, the power of cheese. If you think we only offer insurance, if you think we only offer them innovative financial ideas, if you think we're only for farmers and ranchers, think again. Insurance, investments for everyone. Farming is hard work, long hours, and a bit unpredictable. But today, producers are putting together a cooperative system that's helping them reduce risk and get more from everything they produce, making it a little easier for them to greet each new day with confidence. We keep the ghetto. Man, it's so awesome hanging out in the hot tub with Derek Fisher. Thanks for having me over, Don. Hey, no problem. I do it for you. Maybe you can do it for me sometime. <laughs> That's right. Hey, why don't you be on my show next week? You know what? That'd be superb. <laughs> <laughs> WIAA State High School Football Championships and Fox Sports Net brought to you by MI Bank. Visit us anytime online at MIBank.com. By Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board, Got Milk? And by Rural Insurance, providing a full line of insurance products for Wisconsin families and businesses. Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, the Division II State Football Championship, Menominee and Brookfield Central here on Fox Sports Net. And we have a familiar name to not only high school football here in the state of Wisconsin, but to college football with the Wisconsin Badgers. As we welcome in the third member of our broadcast crew, it's Bob Brainerd with Joe Panos. Hey, Craig, thanks very much. Yeah, Joe Panos, interesting story that he is patrolling the Brookfield Central sidelines today here at Camp Randall. Now, Joe, of course, no... No strangers to the sidelines here. In fact, he's sporting his Bucky Badger red. 
<laughs> this afternoon's game. He sticks out like a sore thumb amongst all that white and blue. But Joe Panos grew up playing high school football in Brookfield, but not for Central, for the East Spartans. He then moved on, of course, to have a distinguished career. First played at Whitewater, then, of course, Rose Bowl team at the University of Wisconsin, right here with the Badgers. Then he went on to a career in the NFL, played with the Buffalo Bills, first the Philadelphia Eagles, had a chance even to play with the New England Patriots, but turned it down and decided he wanted to retire. Now, Joe was in retirement this past year, and Central coach Rick Seinold said, Hey, Joe, you look bored. Why don't you come and coach? Now, Seinold knows Joe because he used to be the football coach over at Brookfield East and coached Joe at that high school. Well, now, of course, he's the coach at Brookfield Central. Asked Joe to come and coach. He hesitated at first. Joe thought about it, came and decided to coach the offensive line for the Lancers, and he has been a success story ever since. And Coach Seinold also added that he hopes that Joe continues to coach here and maybe takes it on to the next level because he says Joe Panos is a natural coaching kids and maybe has a future in it somewhere down the line all right bob thanks very much there'll be a test at the end of the game to find out where joe panos is going next well traveled career yeah with the map no doubt about that very very interesting to wind up over at the crosstown rival in high school for coaching and you had an opportunity to play a couple of years uh here at wisconsin with him yeah, I was fortunate enough to be here in 93 and 94 when Joe was here. We went to won the Big Ten championship for the first time in 32 years and won the Rose Bowl. Barry Alvarez will call Joe the best team captain he has ever had. Not the most talented guy in the world, but one of those guys that everybody likes to follow. Great example of what's right and wrong. And he just gets it done. There's my nominee head coach, Joe Labuda. And his club is, uh, we mentioned off the top, first trip to state since winning it in 1999, seventh overall appearance. And they have four state titles. They have won a ball in the 1990s in 93, 95, 97, and 99. And so Brookfield Central will take the uh, opening kick from Menominee. In these uh, cool late November days, temperatures a balmy, warming up to 34. That's four degrees higher than it was when we started here at 10 this morning. Winds out of the northwest at 7. Forecasts were partly cloudy. We've hardly seen the sun here in the last couple of days. And we are just about ready for football. Menominee and Brookfield Central. And for the Lancers, you see number one, John Doble, getting set to return this kick. Getting the feet limber on that carpet at Camp Randall Stadium. Turf seems to be in pretty good shape today, dried out a little bit from yesterday. Dried out a little bit. If you look in the middle of the field, you can see some uh, footprints. It is still a little damp in spots, but it's much better than it was yesterday. The crowd's starting to get into it. There's some of that snow left over from yesterday morning. It's Bob's snowball, isn't it? Hasn't melted yet. He hasn't found a good target to use it on yet. <laughs> That's why I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Menominee, 13-0 on the season. Brookfield Central, 11-2. Let's kick it off. We are underway in the Division II State Championship game. This one will turn from the 10 for Dover. Gets some room and gets up near the 30-yard line. That's where the Lancers will take over first and 10. Luke Holman comes out, number nine. He's the quarterback for Brookfield. Here's a look at the Senex offensive starters. Strickland and Doble will join him in the backfield. And Donaldson anchors that offensive line for the Brookfield Central Lancers. They finish first in the Greater Metro Conference. First Brookfield, suburban Milwaukee neighborhood. And we are set now with our first offensive series for the Lancers and the pitch. Goes back to Holman. And here's a look at Senex's defensive starters for Menominee. Dan Veith anchors that defensive line. Howard Buck, Henderson, Thompson, Johnson, Merritt. Linebackers and defensive backs for the Menominee Indians. They rolled through the big rivers, 
as I mentioned, unbeaten on the season, defeating Germantown 28-14 to get here in the semis. And along the way, defeating two-time defending state champ Ash Wabanon as well in Division II during that playoff run to get here to Madison. And off on the counter goes to John Noble. And he gets up to the 35-yard line. It'll be third down at four from there. They pull the right guard on this play. That's Joe Thomas. He goes, we're 61 on offense. Watch him pull. He gets a bump there, but watch him finish this block downfield right there. Hello, how are you? Nice athlete. He'll be all over the field today. to his right, dumps one over, and a beautiful one-handed catch is made by Ben Strickland. And we have a player down for Central. Luke Homan, he and took a shot Holman, at the yeah. end of that play. He doesn't move much. Hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. Watch him roll out. He's looking for number six, Ben Strickland, the whole way. Finally Ooh. just lobs it up there. All right, he took a... Nasty hit after he was right under the chin. Yeah. Probably got knocked silly a little bit. You take those shots right under the chin. Better brace yourself. Shaking that head a little bit. He'll be back. He's coming right back in. He's got to come off for a place and say called the timeout. An official timeout for an injury. There you see Panos talking to him, asking what happened. Did she see him coming? Boom. Oh. Hit by Paul Henderson, number eight of the Indians. Setting the tone. Dan Sturgill in at quarterback and almost the snap. And Central falls on it, and it's going to be fourth down. I'm sorry, it's second down. You got to bring in your second string quarterback to take this snap. Didn't have an opportunity to warm up and get comfortable. And this is what happens. Fumble exchange. They're fortunate to fall back on top of it and still have possession. And that's going to happen at just about any level when the uh, backup quarterback kind of comes in unexpectedly, not all the way fresh with the center. Moves back in, so it's nice to see him back. He probably just got dazed a little bit. Second down and 12. Loss of two. More importantly, Lancers keep the football. Off this time, a little bit of running room for Strickland. And let's check in again with Bob Raynard. Well, guys, I know one thing. The basketball coach at Brookfield Center was a little nervous when he saw Holman walk over to the sideline. Holman, the best three-point shooter that the Lancers have from a team that went to state last year, in fact, made it all the way to the semifinals, and is going to be strong again this season. Got to keep him in shape. Basketball season's already started. He needs to go from this championship game right to practice on Monday. No break. They're young, they'll be fine. Yeah, they're young. Going back to pass. Here's the rush. Gets this one away and overthrows his intended receiver, and that's Ben Stricker. Just didn't look comfortable taking his drop. He wasn't able to get his feet set. He had some pressure coming in late at his feet. As he rolled back, he just did not look comfortable trying to find a receiver downfield. Here's the replay, number six right there. Chris Chaston. Holman's got good size, 6'3", 202. Factory Swanson. Here's the punt, a good one, taking a Lancer bounce. All the way down to the 25-yard line and out of bounds. So that's where Menominee will take over. When we come back to Camp Randall Stadium, no score early in the Division II High School Football Championship. The double chili cheeseburger from Hardee's. If you don't want chili fries with it, too bad. You get them anyway. The new double chili cheeseburger. It's a lot of chili and a lot of burger.
Cougars can smell the roses when they want more. For the Huskies, an upset makes their season. But wait, there's more. Northern Illinois looks for revenge after last season's collapse. Toledo's ready to dish out a rude reminder. College Football Saturday, presented by Kyocera on Fox Sportsnet. Hey, guys. Let's not forget, man, this is the NFL show. And the NFL's hardcore, so we must stay hardcore. That's right. You know, Tom, you've been out here long, but you got to make sure that, uh, you know, me and Michael don't get caught up in that Hollywood stuff, you know? Uh, Count on me. Do you guys fall off the wayside? Just let me know, man. Mike, I think I'm going to get the, uh, the polish for the, for the clear. No, no, just just get a nice buff. Hey, guys, how about a bikini wax next? Ooh. The NFL show with Irvin, Syracuse, and Davidson, Saturday and Sunday on Fox Sports Net. Hello? Can you hear me now? I had to plug that one in there. He was on the phone. <laughs> Back in Madison, no score. Menominee, Brookfield Central. Brookfield Central coming up empty on their first offensive series. Now Menominee has a chance with the football. They will take over first and 10 from their own 25. Should I quit the jokes? Uh, keep them Yeah. Off up the middle, a couple of yards for Hickox as we take a look at the Senex offensive starters for Menominee. You see Hickox in the backfield with Lapine and the quarterback Grant Pisick. And Andy LaVoy anchors that offensive line for the Indians. Second down and seven after a gain of three. There's Grant Pisick, the quarterback, number 16. That drop looks to his left, and he will be brought down by number other than Joe Thomas. We talked about him off the top, number 61. You better get rid of that ball if it, if it feels like you got too much time. Something's wrong. He breaks through this line of scrimmage. He beats his block, and here he comes. He's big, he's fast, he's strong, and he loves to play. That's that's a wicked combination if you're uh, one of the Indians right now. Brookfield's defense making a statement here in the last couple of plays. Nowhere to go as we take a look at the central defensive starters brought to you by Senex. Joe Thomas along that line with Ryan Becker, the nose guard. And the linebackers, Kilvinger, Johnson, Aliota. The Doble brothers and Strickland also in that defensive secondary. Fourth and 11, hunting situation now for Menominee. And number six, Ben Strickland. Ben Strickland takes it on one bounce, lose one tackler, make it two. Not the third, though. And not much running room at all there around the 40-yard line. Got to go north and south. And we will take a break here from Camp Randall Stadium and come back. 6.55 to go in the first quarter, no score. New lower interest rates available, now is the time to refinance your home mortgage. Call the mortgage professionals at Diversified Mortgage Services and let them evaluate your existing mortgage and show you the amount you may save with a new home mortgage. A lower interest rate can save you money and free up your home's equity for debt consolidation. Ask us about the many ways you can save money on refinancing your loan with a new home mortgage. Call today for a complete consultation on the savings that could be yours by refinancing your home. If you need a car or truck and you're looking for something to stand out, here it comes. Let's read it out loud. Every 2002 and 2003 car and truck is now $500 under invoice. Get rebates as large as $4,000. Or you can finance interest-free, all on top of $500 under invoice prices on every new car and truck in stock. You want to save the most. Now you know how, and now you know where. Kassirik Ford, Eau Claire back at Camp Brando and you're looking at Brookfield Central head coach Rick Seinold 
Why is he not on the sidelines? He prefers to call the plays and view his team up in the booth. He's done it all year long, and you really can't blame him because, well, it's worked all year long as well. The uh, two coordinators, Jamie Muelmans and Scott Nelson, the offensive and defensive coordinators for the Lancers, they call the plays, they stay on the sidelines, they communicate with Rick the entire time. Seems to work, guys. Well, you go with what works, but very rare. And here's a, a loose ball on the turf fumbled again. Snap. Second uh, fumbled snap by the Lancers here early in the first quarter. Well, and this one's on the center. Recovered. I didn't catch his number, but he's going to make up his mind when he's going to snap it to get it up there. He just kind of lollygags this one up there at half speed. Everybody else is going full speed. By the time the ball gets to the quarterback, it's too late. Get that snap up. Then going back to the uh, the head coach, it's just very rare not to have the head coach down on the field. Second down at 12. Holman goes back to pass. Ooh, and oh, almost a nice catch. Thought it was going to be another one for Strickland. He's already made one great one. Almost came up with the second, but going back to the head coach being in the booth up here in the press box, you get a much better view from up here. You can really see what's going on and what the other team's trying to do to you from up here. You kind of get that bird's eye view. And if you have those trusted coordinators down on the sidelines, keep the kids in line and make sure that they have a good feeling of what's going on down on the field and get away with it. How does the coach from upstairs relay to his kids to not fumble those snaps? <laughs> Holman back to pass. Loops this one way out of bounds. Uh, it's interesting, Holman comes into uh, this championship game completing only 41% of his passes. And they have gone pass heavy here in this first quarter. Well, the Menominee defense is held tough on the run. They haven't, Brookfield Central hasn't been able to establish anything on the ground so far. Thinking maybe they can get it through the air. So on the exchange, the Indians will have it at their own 32-yard line. Oh, yeah, and by the way, Joe Thomas is their punter, too. 6'7", 255-pound punter. So he's offensive and defensive lineman. This week, Fox NFL Sunday begins with America's number one pregame show. Lions and Bears then kick it off at noon, followed by the Packers and Buccaneers. Showdown of the week in the NFL, perhaps on the season. Both teams clubs tied at 8-2 and two, heading into that matchup. You see Grant Bessie keep that one on his own. Picks up some nice yardage. He ends up picking up about six yards on that play. Six yards on the carry. Second down and four after the carry up to the 38-yard line as we see the sun peeking through the clouds in Madison. Pitch back. Knocked out of bounds. Hickox the carry. Well, Menominee's not going to fear Joe Thomas at all. This time running right at him. Joe Thomas from his defensive end position loses his containment. They get around him to the outside. And that's enough to pick up the first down. As a defensive end, you got to be able to keep your outside arm and shoulder free. That time you got turned. First and ten for the Indians. Ball at their own 47. Will razzle dazzle. Pass complete. And it's going to be a touchdown for Manalini to the tight end, Kyle Rakiger. The number 85. And wide open. Menominee. Absolutely wide open. Trying to play catch up to find him. Let's just play a little toss. Reverse. Go back to the quarterback. By that time, Brookfield Central is pulled. And Kyle slips behind everybody. There's some late pressure here just as he throws the ball, but nothing, nothing to shake him. Oh, a nice toss. On the flea flicker. And the extra point is good. So Menominee pulls out the exotics in the first quarter to surprise Brookfield Central and grab a 7-0 advantage. A 
didn't look like the Lancers were expecting anything like this early. And sometimes this works, Jamie, when uh, you, know, you have nothing to lose here. Scoreless game early, why not do it early? Yeah, they're actually moving the ball well. Why not take a shot? Sidelines celebrate. Everybody's into it right now. And there he is, the man who catches the touch sign, Kyle Repriger. 53-yard touchdown reception. Nice toss, nice catch, a nice one in the end zone. Nice job by the offensive line, keeping all the defensive pressure away. That, time, that play took a long time to develop. They had to hold their blocks a long time. So the Indians will kick off to the Lancers. Kasich on the season, 1,200 yards passing. How about John Doble breaking free and setting up the Lancers in good field position on the kickoff all the way up to the 40-yard line. If you take a look at the Indians scoring drive, took him just under a minute, three plays, 68 yards. Well, look for Luke Holman to kind of settle in right now. Offensive line needs to give him some time to throw the ball. Luke's got to become comfortable in that pocket for the Lancers to have a chance. Right up the middle, Doble. Good gain of about eight, maybe nine yards. Nice job by the center, washing his man across. Right there, number 55 is their center. Sam Donaldson, he just takes his man and throws him across the hole. Backside blocking by the left guard and left tackle. Opens up wide. First down. Lancers have that running game going now. Strickland into Menominee territory down to the 42. And they pull the right tackle, Joe Thomas. This is a counter play. He pulls down flat down the line of scrimmage, kicks out the defensive end. It's going to be on the right side of your screen there. Opens up a big enough hole. Ben Strickland scoots through there and picks up another first down. So the Lancers offense is rolling right now. Strickland nearly 2,000 yards rushing, 23 touchdowns for the Lancers. This time Doble. Flag comes flying in along that line of scrimmage. That's usually not a good sign for the offense. That's right. And it's going to go against Brookfield Central. And this one seven to nothing. Let's see if we can take a look at it right along the line of scrimmage. Center cuts the linebacker at the second level. I didn't uh, think there was any problem with that. Well, that's going to cost the Lancers first down into 18. Pushes the ball back to their 45 yard line. They need to get to the 32 of the nominee to pick up the first down. First and 22. Strickland for a yard. Well, and that's a big penalty. They're moving the ball well, and all of a sudden they get a penalty and moves it back 15 yards. Hopefully it doesn't take their momentum away. But we've seen it for the last two days. We've seen these teams. They just make mistakes with penalties and turnovers before they know it. They're out of the game. Another fumbled snap. That one's still loose. And the Lancers come up with it. When well, you can see right there the center and quarterback talking. Something's going on. Covered by number six, Strickland. What, what would you speculate? I mean, first quarter and three fumbled snaps. Let's see if we can see what happens. That ball gets up there. That's on Holman. He's got to make sure he gets it. It hits him in the hands. 
center got snap up. Holman's had two of them, and his backup quarterback has had one. Back to pass, here comes the rush. And he gets hit as he throws, incomplete. Well, and since he took that big shot in that first drive, he has not uh, lit the world on fire. This pressure is going to come from the outside, off the right side of the line. John Doble peels back, gets that, but right there, he doesn't get enough of him. Number five, right there with the pressure, Shea Schmisky. Gets enough of his arm. High, floating, fun, beautiful. Fair caught at the 22-yard line for Menominee. Brady Hickox returning the punts, and it's going to be Menominee football now on the exchange. Let's check in with Bob Brainerd. Hey, guys, you may have noticed Ben Strickland, number six, has that kind of Steve Tasker look, the little double-padded helmet. Nothing wrong with Ben. He's just taking some extra precautions. He had a couple minor concussions early in his career, but the coach told me that, nah, it's just extra precautions. The way he bounces around there, that little jitterbug move that he has out of the backfield when he's playing on offense. He takes a few good licks, and at 5'9", 170 pounds, you can get some good licks in from some of those guys on defense. Well, you can see that cap right there. They just put a shell on top of that. A little bit softer for him. 5'9", 168. You don't see too many of those. Second down and eight. Option pass will be thrown and complete. Jason Wagner. And a nice job to Ray Prager. Another exotic a trick play. They toss the ball to the running back and he throws it downfield. Before he does, he avoids this pressure right here. He gets him off his feet with a little pump fake. Ryan Becker, number 20, jumps off his feet, and by doing that, he's been able to bring him down. And a nice catch by Kyle Rapperger. Nominee really mixing it up on their calls on offense. And it's hard to, hard to key in on what exactly they're doing. They're throwing the ball, they're running exotics, they're running the ball. And, and doing all of those things well. And Swanson on that last carry. Yeah. Get him to the outside corner, and he ends up picking up six yards. Phenomenal already leading 7 to nothing. They have a nice drive going here. Second down. And about five in their own 44. And this time, Pisa keeps it himself. Gets about three up to the 47-yard line. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Running a bit of a quarterback option or a quarterback out the back door. Got some pressure upfield from Brookfield Central. Wasn't able to turn the corner. A host of the Lancers clean him up. Basic one for one, 53 yards and a touchdown off that flea flicker earlier this quarter. Only scores. He gets it to Brady Hickox. And enough for the first down as he noses the football into Lancer territory. Menominee's got some good momentum right now. Their offensive line is running up to the ball, getting, getting lined up so the quarterback can make any adjustments he might have to make, getting their plays in fast. We've used the term before, but a finely tuned machine is definitely what they are. There are a few teams that we have seen in this uh, state high school football championship. We saw Lancaster last night. We have certainly won a Division Four. Lunging ahead for a couple as time will wind down here in the first quarter. And Menominee is driving. And we'll get a breather here as we uh, switch sides. Too far to go at midfield. The Indians lead the Lancers at the end of one in the Division Two state football championship. And, uh, I'll take one of those things. Parisian mocha flake? Yeah. I'll be 
work until the sun goes down And spent the time another dollar bound there's no way to describe the kind of risk a small business owner takes, but there is a way to insure it. Rural Mutual. We understand what's at stake. Gonna be here, no matter how long. Till the sun goes down. Well, that'll fix it. And now if I can just find someone I trust to fix my furnace problem. I just don't trust those wild planes I see in the paper. That's why I call the green team. They're different. They were on time, explained the problem, fixed only what needed fixing. Fair price, too. Yeah, right. No, really. Call the rain team. Give me that number. In southeastern Wisconsin, call Dykeman Family Heating, Air Conditioning, and Boiler Corporation at 414-273-7500. We will impress you when you make that call to the rain team. WIAA State High School Football Championships on Fox Sportsnet. Brought to you by Cenex, CHS Cooperatives, linking producers with consumers, and by Hardee's, the way food ought to be. Back at Camp Randall, sun poking just over the top of the upper deck here at the stadium in Madison. I don't know if it's that warm, but uh, hey, when you're dressed and you're marked up, ready to go for your team, why not? When you're winning, it's going to be a little bit warmer. Yeah, when you're winning, it is warmer, isn't it? First place, second quarter. Ball tipped and intercepted. Brookfield comes up with their first turnover of the game. John Doble. Off the tip from Joe Thomas, 6-7. And Grant Pesic isn't able to get the ball over him. He gets that big paw up in the air and tips it up. Nice play. The defense bites on it. But he just gets enough. He gets, gets off the ground. He moves well. He jumps. He runs. He gets that paw up there just in time. Boy, that kid is athletic. We were talking about him all afternoon. And the ball is loose now. It looks like Menominee comes out of there with it. Oh, a costly one for the Lancers. So they trade a couple turnovers on this play. That sideline right there is pumped up. Look at number nine for the Indians, Trevor Howard. Central had a nice play going. Well, that's going to be a Menominee football. We're going to take a break here from Camp Randall. Seven nothing Indians. At Cox Food Center, we're offering you more ways to save money than ever before. The Cox Chronicle and Extra featuring pages and pages of value. Cox Constant, everyday low prices on the basic items you buy most often weekly rewards just for shopping with us and the cops key card automatic discounts every time you shop at cops we value savings quality and most of all we value you cops food center experience the difference championship high school football the lifelong memories the school spirit the big game hero WIAA Football Championships on Fox Sports Net. Tune in November 21st and 22nd for hot football action. Brought to you by Gold Cross Couriers. Congratulations to all area teams on their great effort. Welcome NBA All-Star Jerry Stackhouse. The Menominee faithful making a trip down to Madison. Their Indians are ahead 7-0 in the Division II State Football Championship. It's been a slippery football here in the early going. Some fumbled snaps and some fumbles all together, some turnovers. Three fumble quarterback exchanges. And then this fumble right here. They get what they want. Nice block by Joe Thomas. Gets his man level. And just as the running back's falling down on the ground, the ball is stripped. Menominee coming out. Turnovers are even at 1-1. An interception and a fumble. The ball has been on the ground a lot. Here's the pass. 
And that just slips through the hands of Jason Wagner. Good looking play. And I'll give him one thing. He's turning around and looking right into the sun on this play. Yeah, nice protection Ooh. until the end here. You're going to see it from the right side of the screen. That's Joe Thomas rolling up on his legs. Pass may have been just a tad short as well. Good coverage by the defensive backs for the Lancers. Would have had to have been a perfect throw. On the keeper, nowhere to go. Nice job. The defense flows with the motion. They make the adjustment. Nominee ran this play earlier for a few yards. Pesic keeps it. He tries to get to the outside. Number 88's right there. Ryan Schweiger doesn't lose his, lose his containment. Loss of about one third down and 11. Pesic steps up over center. Almost trips, regains his balance, throw, complete. And that one out of bounds, and he finds his big tight end again, Rap Breaker. Pesic has some nice boys. He trips coming out of here. Right there, he keeps his balance. Has the poise to gather himself and find his receiver coming across the middle. And they, those two have hooked up a couple times. Pesic and Rap Breaker. There you see the passing yards today, 87 to 5. Essig keeps it himself, gets about four down to the 30. Took a big shot at the end of that run, following his blockers. He's going to adjust his equipment. Ear pad popped up. Working on a snap right now. There you see those turf shoes, too. Those are dry turf shoes. They've got real small little nubs on them to grip the turf. Well, it's interesting thing about Menominee, too. They're one of the very few, if not the only team in the state to play on artificial surface during their regular season. They play over at UW-Stout. That's where uh, the college is located in Menominee. So they play regular season games on artificial turf. So it's almost like a little symbolism. <laughs> just prep to come down to Get Madison. Ready for this. No problem. One goal. Slipper, we've got the shoe. That's right. Dry, we've got the shoe. Unbeaten on the season. <laughs> this time, the handoff goes to Corey Geertz. Number 41. Nice playoff tackle going at Big Joe Thomas. They haven't backed down from him. He's made a couple plays, but on this play, you're going to see him right here. He's worried about the blocker. He doesn't close that hole. Running back, Corey Geertz works right through there. Joe's got to come down and close that hole. Shut that down. First down at 10, here's the play. And that Brookfield Central defense all over it. 66 out there is Luke Irise. And you see Joe Thomas, 61. Luke Irice does a nice job. He gets off his block, gets in that backfield. Shows some good speed getting back there, too, to force him back. Brings up a second and 16. Essick keeps it himself. He swore down to about the 23. And let's check in now with Bob Rayner. Hey, Craig, get this for family lineage. The tailback from Menominee, Brady Hickox, he is about 10 generations deep of Wild Bill Hickox. Come on. I am not kidding you. There's a name change along the way, but he is a descendant, 10 generations, but he is definitely within the family tree. In fact, his grandfather, who's 75 years old, oh, spent his entire you. life in Dunn County up in Menominee. He made the trip to Deadwood, South Dakota, where apparently legend has it. The wild dipper was shot, holding the famous two pair of aces and eights in his hand. Yeah, set the stage. 
and Grandpa was at a mock trial in the theater of Deadwood, where they... And where are you coming up with this stuff? I dig, my man, I dig. Grandpa was at a mock trial where Wild Bill was apparently shot in Deadwood. They wanted him to be in the jury, but he had to tell him, I can't be in the jury because I am a relative. How about that? I am starting to fear for my life up here. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff, Bob. I don't know where you get it, but it's great stuff. We're coming back after this break. You need to race the rain. You need to outrun the sun. You need to be two places at once. That's why you need rock-solid energy products and people you can depend on. Senex. Our energy comes through. For years, I, Socrates, have pondered the true meaning of life. And I'm still stuck. Fortunately, today, there's a new school of thought at Milwaukee Public Schools Community Learning Center. A place where adults can pick up new job skills and kids can get help with homework, make new friends, learn teamwork, and discover hidden talents. For a new philosophy on learning, call 475-7252. Milwaukee Public Schools Community Learning Center. Times have changed. You know what, man? Why did they take away the end zone game? Man, I like that, man. Philly White Shoe Johnson. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, that? What's your favorite? What's my favorite move? Yeah, your favorite. I think, I think it was basically the icky. Yeah, friend. I love it. Icky was it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Like, you guys used to have a grenade. Man. I love oh, that, that man. I want to be very important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, everybody oh, fall oh, out. Belly bump, man. Belly bump with the ball. Come on, oh, man. Oh, 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 Come on, Mike, give it to The NFL Show with Irvin, Syracuse, and Davidson. Saturday and Sunday on Fox Sports Net. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Menominee driving. Up by seven, facing a third down and 16 at the 28-yard line at Brookfield Central. And the Indians called a timeout. Big play for them. They have... Uh, Dominated on the field according to these statistics, but lead on the big board though by only a touchdown. See the total yards, 128 to 30. Third and 16. Pesic looks one way, throws the next into the end zone and intercepted. Brookfield Central coming up with the interception. That's Ben Strickland. That's what happens when you're only looking at one man. They looked him, they try to look him off, but he only has intentions of throwing this to one guy the whole way, covered or not. And Ben Strickland, number six, has the best position on this ball. He gathers it in. Great camera work. That's uh, that's also a pretty good position right there. Nice job, guys. Trying to hook up with Jason Wagner in the end zone. Just wasn't there. Should not have thrown that one. So the uh, Lancers get the ball at the 20 yard line after the turnover. Let's see what they can do with the football. Goble on the run. Finally gets pulled down out of bounds. Not before he picks up a first down at 15 yards to the 35. Nice little stiff arm at the end of that play to give him a couple extra yards. Following Joe Thomas in number 62 right there, Steve Johnson. Get some nice blocks. A little contact out of bounds, but that not much. Unintentional. Hand off Strickland. Punches forward for about four to the 39. A lot of this running game comes off the point. Their passing game hasn't worked so far. Doesn't seem like Luke Holman's been able to get comfortable in the pocket to find his receivers, so they're going to have to do this on the ground for now. Well, early on, they tried to run, and Menominee shut him down, and they went strictly to the pass. That didn't work, and then they've come out and had pretty good success running the football. Got into some penalty situation out there on last series to take him out. And the and the turnover, right. Two plays, two turnovers uh, earlier. 
That play right there, Ryan Becker, number 20, takes it right up the middle. Nice gain, give him a third short opportunity. Third and two. This is big for the Lancers. They got a head of steam going. Holman over center. Pitch back. And just enough for the first down, it looks like, by Strickland. Got tripped up early, only needed two yards. It's going to be close. He's, he's got to get to the 45-yard line. He's about six inches short. We're going to have to bring the chains out to measure this one. And they will bring out the chains for the measurement. There's the head coach of uh, Brookfield Central up in the booth. Rick Seinold. Stretching, stretching, stretching. First down. All right, let's go back down to Bob Brainerd. And uh, what kind of stories do you have for us now, Bob? Oh, Jesse this is James stuff? No, 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 no relative. This is basic football stuff, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> ben Strickland, five foot nine, 170 pounds. We mentioned that. But he has a heart of goal, according to Coach Seinold. He was fourth in the state in rushing, eighth in the state in scoring, even with that little package. And Strickland told me before the game that the guy he, he admires the most is the former NFL great running back Walter Payton. Not because of what he did in the field, but the way he handled people, people and himself off the field. And that says a lot about uh, both of those people, because Walter Payton's one to admire, and for somebody like Strickland to admire Payton, and as long ago as Payton was running in the NFL, it says a lot. Lag comes down on the play, and we have a holding call against the Lancers. No matter what the Lancers keep or try to do, they keep shooting themselves in the foot, whether it's dropping the ball in a quarterback exchange, the fumble by a running back, or big penalties like this one, a big holding penalty. It's going to give them a first and 21 situation. These penalties are not easy to overcome, especially in a state football championship well, game when your opponent's so good. Yeah, it's hard enough beating your opponent. You don't want to have to beat yourself as well. There's a penalty there. It's two for 31, so they've had two big ones. See what they do to chip away. And up goes to Mike Joyce, trying to turn the corner, get some of those yards back as he gets tripped up at the 42-yard line. Got about eight, so it'll be second and 13. Some tough running, trying and trying to get to that corner and turn it up the field. He's just trying to outrun everybody. He's the motion man coming. Gets a little bit of a shirt there. Finally brought down by Matt Johnson. throw a pass in when the Indians have to hold back a little bit. They give him plenty of protection. And look what Luke Holman does. He finds a nice target and Chad Strickland downfield. 28 yard. Lancers have a nice drive going. 28 yard pickup as you saw. Now the handoff goes to Doble. Ball carried by Lancers are setting themselves up overcoming the penalty. Gain of about four, second down at six at the 26-yard line of Menominee. And see Holman in the huddle for the Lancers. He gets the call from the sideline. Have to hurry to get this playoff. A broken play. That ball almost looked like that popped out of Boy. there, too. I don't know if his hands are cold or what's going on. Exactly. 
And probably a wise call at this point to call timeout. Had trouble getting that uh, play in and not sure if they had the right play called oh, yeah. here, but well, that football pops out and throws your timing off too. Well, and on that play again, it pops right out. It hits him in the hands and scoots right through. He's lucky it didn't come all the way out. So 4.38 to go. And again, as we talked about off the top, there was a, a grudge match going on in 1999 between Brookfield and Menominee, but the Indians prevailed 19 to eight in that state high school football championship at Division II. And how ironic they will meet again. It's very rare that teams meet again for the state championship game. That is the case here this year. And we have a chance to go back, flashback at Camp Randall Stadium to 1999. Menominee through the air, building up their lead. The pitch and the touchdown. And a big stop just short of the end zone. And Brookfield Central at that point holding up the silver ball. They would like nothing more than take the gold home. Flag comes down again. See if we have delay a game on Brookfield Central. Delay a game out of a timeout. That's, well, how does that happen? I don't know. So instead of a third and five or a third and six, or a third and 11, just when they start getting things going, a couple penalties, shut them down. Well, these are the things, you know, Jamie, you're only down seven to nothing if you're Brookfield Central. You keep shooting yourself in the foot like this, and, and one time it's going to go off big, and That's right. it'll be done. You can't keep making these mistakes. I mean, it's a close game right now. If you put something together, you can put some points on before half. Moment back to pass. Here comes the rush. Flags are flying, and this one sails out of bounds. Still the climb. This is going to be a hold. There's a jailbreak. Holman's running for his life. It was third down, and on the incompletion, you're probably right. Let's see what uh, Menominee decides to do. And they'll decline the holding call against the Lancers. It'll be fourth down at the 31. Right there on the center. The center's having a rough day between the snaps and the holding call right there. Joel Labuda of Menominee. He's going for it. Fourth down and 11 for the Lancers. Holman, sack. That's number five, Jay Schmiske. And he goes down at the 43-yard line, and that's where Menominee will take over, and they'll come out of there with great field position. I like to see him throw this ball away and not give him such good field position, but he doesn't have time. As soon as he turns around, he's got a man in his face right there, Jay Schmiske. Called his name a couple times. They're knocking each other down. No mercy. That'll mark the ball uh, just over the 40 at the 41-yard line now for Menominee. Still a great field position for them, holding a 7 to nothing lead. And again, they go to Corey Gertz. Lancers had a good opportunity there. They put something together and then they started shooting themselves in the foot, turned the ball over on downs. But just under four minutes to go here in this half. Menominee's got excellent opportunity to try and put some more points on the board going into the half. Line. Essex hands it off to Brady Hickox. Cross here to 45. And the third down down about four from there. 320 to go here in the first half of the Division II State Football Championship. 
Marshfield and Hartman Arrowhead to follow later this afternoon in the Division I Championship. First down. The Cox gets it as he crosses midfield. There's the Arrowhead team. They're playing next in the Division I game against Marshall. Have a uh, quarterback in the mix in there named Tyler Donovan, and I believe that uh, the red he wears at Arrowhead will continue on as a Wisconsin Badger. Keep him in state. I think. Oh, oh. And on the keeper, as it gets a few more, and there's the cheering section. These guys are out in front for Menominee. Well, you wonder, you got the shirt off, you got the body painted. Where do you go back and get your shirt? Now, where do you leave your shirt and your jacket? The <laughs> leave in the car. <laughs> Again, Isaac on the keeper. There's no going back when you take your shirt off and put a letter on you. Well, I guess not. Yeah. One of those things where you can't say been there, done that, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Never have. I don't quite have the, uh, the stomach. I've got one ab. Got one ab. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. you gotta, you got to look good in the process, that's don't right. you? That's right. Or you just, you just have to not care. Well, okay. That's very true. Got a nice crowd at Camp Randall this afternoon, and sure many will stick around at 4 o'clock. Division One Championship is, we were talking, Marshfield at 12 and 1, taking on Arrowhead also at 12 and 1, and Marshfield winning last year's 2001 title in Division One, convincingly over Kenosha Trepper, 24 to 7. A couple of powerhouses ready to clash in what will wind up a historical seven division championship in Wisconsin high school football history. Look at this graphic. Each team's rushed the ball 19 times. Each team's had it 26 plays, passed it seven times. The phenomenon get the best of it so far. Quickly up the line of scrimmage, Indians snap it. A little bit short on the attempt there on third and three. Going to be about a yard, yard and a half short was Hickox there. The clock continues to wind under two minutes to go here in the first half. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. And it looks like the Indians are going to go for it. Wickfield Central is keep shooting themselves in the foot when they have the ball in offense. So if you don't get this, chances are they're not going to do anything. Essek drops back and then runs with the football first down and a big gainer about 10 yards down to the 30. Excellent play call. They allow the quarterback to come back and make a handoff. By doing that, the whole defense bites on the running back. He's, the quarterback steps back right there. Pesic. he's got a lot of room to run. Instead of getting one, he picks up plenty. Just incomplete out of bounds. He was looking for Wagner on first down of 10. Well, that's the same matchup that they paid the price on last time when they were trying to go to Wagner. He's being covered by Ben Strickland. Messing just doesn't deliver a strike. Yeah, they're wheeling in the, uh, the big camera for the uh, sideline of the big game that we've been talking about the last couple of days. Gophers, Badgers for tomorrow. Got to get out of that camera's way. Isaac keeps it, crosses the 30. Not much there, though. It's going to be third down and about 10. Maybe we can uh, tap into that for the Division One game today. That'd be nice. Can you use some pull in the former Badger, you think? I have not. Your pull is spent. Ain't pulling no more, huh? <laughs> third and long. Isaac. 
throws it up wide open. It's his tight end and broken up at the last minute by Strickland. He has been active in that secondary for the Lancers. Great recovery by Strickland. He's again, he's matched up on number three, Jason Wagner. He's not even in the picture. They're running down the sideline. He sees this man open downfield. He's trying to get it to him. And here comes Strickland to save the day. He's not able to get back there. They go down by 13. Fourth down. Tyson over the middle. This time his tight end's got it. And he is brought down inside the five-yard line. Rap Rager. He's been used a lot. They're going to have a late hit on Joe Thomas on this one. Watch him come in. You don't see the hit, but he delivers a shot. The official's right there to throw the flag. They're going to add a couple of yards onto this. Oh, Boy, the tight end looks uh, the tight end looks bigger than 6'3". He's been a good target for the Indians in this one. So the late hit uh, called on Thomas. We'll advance the football a little bit closer to the goal line. Let's see what the call is. Got a hold on Menominee and a personal foul. So bring it back, wipe off the play, and do it again. Third down to long. Let him catch the hold. throw down the middle of the field. The tight end does a good job getting behind the coverage, behind the linebackers. Throws a strike where only his man can catch it. Pesek's had time. He's thrown extremely well. And on that play, I think the hold came on the tackle that was trying to block Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas comes off of it, hits the quarterback late, and gets a personal foul. Well, Rap Rager has been uh, heavily utilized in a passing game that hasn't been used a whole lot, but he's been the go-to guy, Jamie. Well, this play is the one that broke it open. Put some points on the board. They've done it in different ways. This tackle right there gives him an opportunity to catch another one. That's a big catch right there coming back with the man on it. There's no one getting to the sideline. Three catches, 88 yards, and a touchdown. He's made them pay. Well, I would imagine he will be an option here as they replay the fourth down and nine from the 30-yard line. A well, nice effort by Rock Rager to get down inside the five-yard line. Goes for nine of the offsetting penalties. Splits three high, two low. And they run another option play. Just like we said, they're going to go to the tight end. This time, Adam Begum. Nice play. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage. Spike this ball to stop the clock. The clock stops to move the chains. It's going to start immediately. First and goal from the five yard line. Nice job confusing the Lancer defense on that shift they had. Isaac uh, spikes the football to stop the clock. 18 seconds to go. How many offensive linemen get a chance to throw the football? Not many. You'd be salivating all over that one, wouldn't you? Well, watch this again. It's a nice play. Right there, 67. Adam Bagoon gets this ball. Put everything into it to get it there. And again, Foul Rapperger. Goes down and gets a tough catch. All right, well, now, see, that's why we have great camera work. Apparently, that uh, pass was by uh, Paul Henderson, number eight, and he put on 67 jersey. Watch this. Quick switch. How can you stop him if you can't find him? I don't like that. Put one jersey on and play. How about Rick Seinold now? He can't see that upstairs, the Brookfield Central coach. <laughs> That's 
that's one of those things in high school football. You can pretty much do anything you want. Put one jersey on and play your positions. Let's go down to Bob Rainer, Bob. Hey, Jamie, uh, Joe Thomas on the Brookfield Central side, he echoes your thoughts. He says that sometimes when he has to change jerseys, if he's going from lineman to tight end, that he'll miss a couple plays making the exchange, and it's frustrating because you look at him, he's a guy who wants to be in the football field for every single play. It's a pain. It's something you shouldn't have to deal with. It takes you out of the game. Why try and trick your opponent? Playing straight up. Second and goal of the five. Quick pass broken up. Once again by who else but Strickland of Brookfield Central. Rap Rager, by the way, already in the first half, Jamie, has set a uh, Division II receiving yards total of 112. First record of the day. Didn't have any in the first game. Had get plenty uh, yesterday out of the four divisions. Saw the numbers there. Third and goal, here it is. Isaac scrambles and locks this over. Ooh, out of bounds. Is that Rap Rager? That sure was. Look at him come right back. No problem. How about that focus on the ball? Wow. So what, those corners in the end zone here in Camp Randall get a little tight. That's why there's pads on those fences. Thank goodness, I mean to tell you. Know where you're at. He has no idea. Look at that. I give him a 10. <laughs> I'll tell you, if he is not, in, imagine if you're not in full pads. I mean, we, we can't see it on the other side. I'm sure his head hit first. You barely have time to get your arms down. And the shoulder pads brace your neck. That could have been ugly. Man, look at him. He just bounces right back, jumps over the fence, says, let's go for it. Fourth down. I want it. Give it to me. Can't come up with a nice effort. Broken up by Andy Doble, 44. He does get one of his hands out of there, so he can't bring the ball in. And here comes the field goal unit. Three seconds left. That was fourth down. And they turn it over. Give it over on downs with three seconds to go. And a seven to nothing lead for Menominee here in what I've got to tell you after doing the state high school football championships now over the last several years, this has to be one of the most uh, bizarre first halves of football as far as play calling goes, jersey switching, fumbled snaps, turnovers. A lot of things going on. Tight ends leaving the ballpark. <laughs> This guy deserves a break at halftime. There's no question about that. He's already has a state high school football record for receiving yards. And Rap Rager will get a break here. And the Menominee Indians lead at the break, seven to nothing over Brookfield Central. And we're gonna go down to the field now. Joel Labuda is with our Bob Brainerd. Coach, you guys are up seven nothing at the half, but disappointing you didn't put it six more on the uh, uh, end of it right there. We're, we're wasting too many opportunities right now. We gotta make sure we put the ball in the end zone. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. Back to you guys. All right, Bob, thanks very much. Uh, very interesting. A lot of yards piled up by Menominee in this one. Rap Rager leaves the ballpark. Hey, it's halftime. They're up seven to nothing. All righty, same day. And remember, it's very fragile. Right. Thanks. Shake stuff up. Metal or glass? I like the metal. Glass it is. No, 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 dear. Regular or needle nose? Needle nose? Get the regular. Hey, why does she keep doing that? Last month I chose a satellite dish over digital cable. Big mistake. Big mistake. Vertical or horizontal? Mm, I like vertical. Horizontal. Oh, for our house. The National Geographic Channel hits the road searching for mummies. Two guys with a passion for life and death. 
crypts, boneyards, and secrets of the afterlife in places you'd never expect. Ancient relics shrouded in mystery, unwrapped before your very eyes. The Mummy Roadshow. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you win, and sometimes you find yourself at the bottom of a pile of guys who haven't showered in a few hours, in which case, it'd be nice if they'd be good sports and got off. The WIAA Sportsmanship Award. You gotta be good to get it. Well, that'll fix it. And now if I could just find someone I trust to fix my furnace problem. I just don't trust those wild claims I see in the paper. That's why I call the Ring Team. They're different. They were on time, explained the problem, fixed only what needed fixing. Fair price, too. Yeah, right. No, really. Call the Ring Team. Give me that number. In Greater Milwaukee, call Magnum Services, Inc. at 414-744-4424. We will impress you when you make that call to the Ring Team. ACC basketball returns. A dominant form. A superior game. Tobacco Road comes alive as John Cheney's Temple Owls battle Wake Forest and superstar Josh Howard. ACC Sunday Night Hoops returns December 1st on Fox Sports Net. Basketball evolved to its highest state. The best damn sports show, period. Hollywood's biggest stars. Show. Sports greatest athletes. And the sexiest babes. Wow. Comedy, commentary, dare you. and highlights. Weeknights at 8 and 11. You gotta help me on my board, though. Yeah, yeah you, you need some help. You gotta look good. Right. Saturday night, you gotta look good. Right, everybody. Right. Mike's gonna pick out that stuff. Thanks. Goose, I think you look good at some tight. Super 100. Yeah. Super 120. Super 120, Daddy. I think you got everything with some style. What you need is just stretch. Do you have any stretch material? Oh, a lot of stretch. Yeah. It's a real stretch. lot of stretch. The NFL Show with Irvin, Syracuse, and Davidson. Saturday and Sunday on Fox Sports Net. The red flowing stuff. We're doing an NFL show at Regency. What's going on? <laughs> College Hockey's Best comes to Fox Sports Net. The Badgers host the Red Hot Wolverines. Wisconsin looks to get in the winner's column against top-ranked Michigan. Next Friday at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Back at Camp Randall, the Division II State Football Championship between Brookfield Central and Menominee is low scoring, but it is exciting. 7 0. Lancers trailing the Indians at halftime. And joining me at the half is Deb Hauser, an associate director at the WIAA, in charge for the first time with basketball this year. And Deb, we got a little overlap. Talk about that. It's kind of a unique situation we have between football and basketball and other sports. Well, as you know, uh, boys basketball practice started on Monday for most of our schools, with the exception those here this weekend. So there is about a week of overlap. Uh, boys can open up on Tuesday night. Obviously, the team's playing here. Probably the kids will be out on Monday. So a little bit of overlap with, with our weather and when we can play uh, our state championship, that's going to happen. For our girls, we had an overlap of about a week for uh, swimming and diving athletes. So, you know, it's, there's a little overlap, but they seem to be able to schedule everything so it works out. And really, Deb, your hands are tied in the situation because school has to start at a certain time now, right? Exactly. 
exactly with uh, September 1 start dates you know we talked about starting our seasons later well that would shorten those seasons and we really didn't want to do that and our schools asked us not to do that so uh, you know we're trying to keep everybody happy and obviously there's not enough weeks to do all that so as you head into the basketball season Deb your first challenge is what are some of the challenges you're going to be faced with trying to keep everybody happy as far as on the court well as you know we've been uh, having a state basketball tournament for a long long time uh, great opportunity and wonderful uh, experience for kids and communities. I just want to try to add some new touches to the tournament. Uh, I'm excited about having uh, basketball next week. Uh, state tournament in March just seems like a, a wink away. Uh, I just want to do some new things and uh, one of the biggest challenges I want to uh, try to attempt to break into this year is the officiating and improving officiating in basketball because the game has changed and I think we need to uh, improve our officials. All right, Deb, and you have a, a few more that you probably want to keep to yourself, but we're going to look forward to that. Good luck to you this season as we, hey, we're going to drop the puck on the court, right? That's right. Bring it on. Let's go. Bring it on. Deb's ready. We're ready for the second half, but not before we check out the stats and the first half highlight that's coming up next. You're watching High School Football Championship Action on Fox Sportsnet. And we also have that cancel button in case you don't want to. Excuse me. why people get excited. I mean, really upset when something gets kicked up and smacks their windshield. Like it's some big deal. So you got a little nick. Hey, before long, you won't even notice it. A dinky little chip on the windshield. What's the worst that could happen? How will you know when to call Auto Vision Center? Don't worry. It'll hit you. He has come to enslave Eternia. I am Skeletor, overlord of evil. His power knows no limits. Have you the faintest inkling to whom you speak? His hordes will stop at nothing. Unfortunately, they don't stand a chance. I believe I'm going to gag. Tsunami presents an all-new original series, Masters of the Universe. Every Friday at 6, only Tsunami. Back at the Division II State Football Championship, Menominee in a good one, leading Brookfield Central 7-0 at the half. Hi everybody, Bob Brainer back here on the field as the halftime activities continue. It has been a good first half, even though the scoreboard doesn't indicate it. If you missed it, let's check it out with some first half highlights. Menominee did it with all the razzle-dazzle. You take it, you take it, no, you take it, and then you throw it to number 85, Kyle Rapwagger. And then they look for him again, even though they were able to, Central was able to get in there and shake it up a little bit. Ratbragger was able to make the catches time and time again, marching them down the field. And then the option again, the throw, and there's 85 again. But then right before the half, trying to cash in, watch Ratbragger. Didn't make the catch, but the effort, outstanding, as he fell out of the stadium. But he was okay. Menominee led 7 to nothing at the half. So that has been their story. The problem on the Brookfield Central side has been hanging on to the football. Luke Holman got knocked out in the first court, court, quarter at quarterback. His replacement fumbled the football. Holman came back in, fumbled the ball again on a bad snap, and Menominee recovered. Then when they even gave it up, Ben Strickland, usually pretty sure-handed, a good runner, he coughed it up. Menominee got the football back. And then, one more time, bad exchange, Holman had to eat it. That's been the story for Brookfield Central. Just can't hang on to the football. And there are your first half stats, pretty much even across the board, but look at the passing yards. 112 to 33, and first down from Menominee, nine to five. They've been able to move the football, just not able to put it into the end zone enough. Enough, though, that they lead it seven to nothing here in the first half. Second half action coming up. We're sending it back up to Craig and Jamie for all the action. 
You're watching high school football championship style from the WIA in Division II on Fox Sportsnet. If you think we only offer insurance, if you think we only offer them innovative financial ideas, if you think we're only for farmers and ranchers, think again. Insurance. Investments. For everyone. future for your children? Well, that's just one really good reason. Thanks. Have a great day. Hi, how can I help you? Like to make a deposit? No problem. WIAA State High School Football Championships and Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Cenex, CFA, CSH Cooperatives. Linking producers with consumers and by Rain Team, your heating and cooling experts in the greater Milwaukee area. Menominee leading Central 7 to nothing here. We are at halftime of the Division II State High School Football Championship. And we've had uh, some nice performances on the field by both high school bands. We're going to take a break and come back. Talk to the coaches starting the third quarter in just a moment on Fox Sports Net. Cookies you left, Santa. I didn't leave them cookies. I left them cheese. Ah, the power of cheese. Make your home spotless for the holidays with help from Menards. Choose from a Rubbermaid broom with dustpan, a roller mop, or a smooth surface push broom. Just one ninety six each after three dollar rebate for the garage or workshop. Check out Ultra Wet Drybacks new by Shopback. They're quieter and more powerful. A five-horse, 12-gallon model is just $68.99. A six-horse, 16-gallon model is $84.99. Clean up with savings from Menards. Save big money at Menards. The ACC basketball returns. A dominant form. A superior game. Tobacco Road comes alive as John Cheney's Temple Owls battle Wake Forest and superstar Josh Howard. We are right now. ACC Sunday Night Hoops returns December 1st on Fox Sports Net. Basketball evolved to its highest state. Back in Madison, 7-0 Men Menominee over Brookfield Central. And halftime continues here between these two teams in the Division II. State Football Championship. Let's take a look at who the champions are coming into this Division II over the last couple of days. It started yesterday morning in Division Seven, where Cambria Friesland topped Eau Claire Regis, winning that one 14 to 10. And the Division Six, St. Mary Springs 16-14 over Hilbert to capture that title. Division Five Championship goes to Somerset, 28 to 20. And then Lancaster last night winning their game. 33 to 6 and earlier today was one a key 24 21 in division three who will win division two well Menominee's up at this point seven to nothing and let's check in with Bob Raymer great thanks I'm with uh, Brookfield Central defensive coordinator Scott Nelson Scott you guys don't have any points but you're holding Menominee to seven you have to be pleased uh, yeah we're proud about our kids are playing uh, we just got to eliminate the mistakes on offense uh, we kind of stubbed our toe 
and uh, they took advantage of it, some big plays, but our kids are uh, really proud of that last defensive stand, keep the kids out, uh, keep, the, keep them out before halftime. I think that gives us a shot, shot here now for the second half. I know you're in charge of the defense, but did they talk about the miscues on offense, the Bible stance, what's the problem there? Um, I think they have it squared away. Just a couple of uh, miscommunications and uh, just taking care of it halftime. It shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, Scott, good luck second half. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, Bob, thanks very much. Team's just arriving on the field uh, here for halftime, so we're going to take a uh, quick time on, come back with the start of the third quarter here on Fox Sports Day. Welcome NBA All-Star Jerry Stackhouse. You gotta help me with my wardrobe. Yeah, yeah you need some help. You gotta look good. Right. Saturday night, you gotta look good. Man. Right. Everybody. Right. Mike's gonna pick out some stuff. Thanks. Goose, I think you look good at the tight. Super 100. Yeah. Super 120. Super 120 is good. I think you got everything with some style. What you need is just stretch. Do you have any stretch material? Oh, a lot of stretch. Yeah. Real a whole lot of stretch. The NFL Show with Irvin, Syracuse, and Davidson. Saturday and Sunday on Fox Sports Net. The red flowing stuff. We're we doing an NFL show at Wichita. What's going on? <laughs> the college hockey's best comes to Fox Sports Net. The Badgers host the red hot Wolverines. Wisconsin looks to get in the winner's column against top ranked Michigan. Next Friday at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Doug Flutie achieved greatness on the gridiron, but his son's autism became his toughest challenge. This is his calling in life. Beyond the Glory, Sunday at 8 on Fox Sports Net. College football Saturday presented by Keo Sarah returns to Fox Sports Net tomorrow with the Pac-10 showdown between the Washington Huskies and Washington State Cougars. It's the 95th Apple Cup. Coverage begins tomorrow morning with the College Football Saturday kickoff show right here on Fox Sports Net at 10:30. Back in Madison, Menominee leading this one seven to nothing. We are ready to start the third quarter as you see the quarterback for Menominee that was Grant Pysing and Brookfield Central these two teams met 1999 and Menominee came away as state champions here is the rare rematch here in 2002 and we've got a pretty good game going so far it's been a tough battle neither team's really been able to pull away Menominee does lead seven to nothing dominating in the team statistics statistics I can say that 181 total yards to 90 time of possession turned out to be pretty even as Bob told you uh, during the statistics at halftime but for overall yardage uh, you would think that Menominee would have more than seven points on the board at this point squandering a chance uh, late in the second half to come up with any points as they uh, went for it on fourth down inside the 10 came up short. While in Brookfield Central has hurt themselves with turnovers, with one turnover, then they also have hurt themselves with some large penalties, some big penalties that have moved them back and slowed them momentum when they've had things going on offense. So neither team has really established themselves. Menominee's getting the best of them right now. Hickok set to uh, receive this kick from Mills, and we are underway here in the third quarter. Down for Menominee taking oh, the official corners for a Gears. And he returns it up over the 35 to 36, and that's where the Indians will start out first and 10. Senior quarterback Grant Pysick. The 
this offense has ran the ball really well. They've spread it around to a few different people. They get up to the line of scrimmage quick and they just go. It almost looks like at the last second, the uh, time clock, the play clock is running down. That's just how they get up there and do it. Try and catch the defense off balance. Don't, don't allow them any time to adjust. A lot of the little nuances for Joe Labuda's club, like switching jerseys at the last minute. Second down at nine after the short game. Isaac back to throw, completes the pass to the 40 yard line. And finds Jason Wagner, short gainer. It's going to be third and long. Isaac wanted to throw this ball earlier. He decided not to, and smartly because John Doble dropped back in the coverage. Put in a tough catch. So he rolls out to the sideline with it a little bit longer and waits for his man to get open and then he finds Wagner. Third down and six for the Indians. And the whistle comes in and stops play. They're going to have a third down and one. It's offside down the Lancers. Well, you don't want to make your opponent's job any easier, but uh, third and long turns into third and short. Well, and we mentioned these, these penalties that the Lancers have had. They're just shooting themselves in the foot. This is no different. Instead of a third and long, now they have a third and short. They have a good opportunity to shut down this offense and get yours the ball back. Straight ahead. First down for the Indians. And Menominee would like the uh, party to stop here. They're only up 7 0, however, long way to go on this one, folks. Happy to be here. Everybody's bundled up. Where can we get one of those blankets? <laughs> That's a huge one. Point. A short gainer on the first and ten. Another flag Another on the flag. field. Yeah. Right down by the pile. This one is again against Brookfield Central. The face mask will be the call. And it's a five-yard penalty. They keep giving three yards and giving three yards. One of these times, Menominee's going to make them pay for it. Big box on the near side. Crosses the 40, picks up the first down, knocked out of bounds at the 38-yard line of the Lancers. And the way Menominee's moving the ball, they don't need any help with these penalties, but they'll take them. This time they run a little stretch play out to the outside on the left. Nice block there at the end to pick up a couple extra yards. See him at the end of that play holding on to the ball with two hands. Making sure. And off first man through. Al Lapine. And he rumbles ahead. Just short of the first down and gets about eight. Al doesn't get touched until he's seven yards down the field. Offensive line and his leading blockers doing a good job getting out there and getting into the second level. Forcing safety to come up and make tackles in the uh, running game. Pickhawks sweeping to the near side. He's back right along the line of scrimmage and knocked out of bounds. And it's going to be close to the first down. And they're going to give it to him. First down, Indians. Just enough. So Menominee's drive continues here in the third quarter, already leading this game seven to nothing over Brookfield Central. They have the ball now to 27 yard line of the Lancers. Tyson is sacked, and I'll give you one guess. You didn't see the number. 
Well, that's unfair. You can't ask a little running back to block Joe Thomas. It's going to come off right there. He just bounces off the running back. There's nothing he can do. Probably get some help from your tackle on that play. Before you know it, Grant is looking up at a tower. Loss pushes him back to second and 15. Hickox can't turn the corner. Driving him out of bounds is John Dobel, number one. Well, and on this play, you're going to watch. Joe Thomas, the defensive end, he stretches this play out. They're taking turns trying to block him. There's a little isolation on him. Watch this. One guy, two guys. He just keeps running and forcing it. Stretches the play out long enough for John Dobel to come up and make the play. Third and long. That's the back to pass. Sonny Rush, this time he goes down. Throws the ball out there. But they're going to call an incomplete pass, and Brookfield Central wants intentional grounding call. I'd like to know who was out there. Nice rush by Central right there. He's down. He is down. That I don't should know be how a you sack. Call that incomplete. That should be a sack. Right there, yep. his knee's down. He was clearly down there. The so. right there. That's a bad call. Well, it looks like they did mark it back there after all. So there you go. That's where the punt's going to come from, fourth and 21. They're going to take it. They got it. First down. And he just got it. The final lunge down to near the 15-yard line. And Menominee continues to go into the bag of tricks. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've taken some chances before with some exotic plays. This one the biggest so far. Direct snap right there. And there you see him turn on the speed. There's nobody out there to try and stop him. Return man sneaks up at the end and tries to stop him, but he just gets past him. First down and 10 from the 15. On the keeper, Tyson. Just when you think Brookfield Central's turning things around and going to get their offense the ball back with some momentum, the Indians come back swinging. They've done a little bit of everything today. Boy, they certainly have. They have not been afraid at all to pull out all the stops. Well, and Central hasn't been able to take advantage of it, so... Why not try a trip play? This time, Thomas pulls him down, put it loose on the turf. And it looks like Badomini pounces on it. Big Joe Thomas again gets in there. Strips the ball as quarterbacks fall into the ground. Brookfield Central a little anxious trying to pick this ball up and run with it. Rule of thumb, fall on top of it. Hickox recovered. And their ball pops out right there. Just fall on it, guys. Look at him just throw that man to the side. Man, I'll tell you what, that is, that is a show for somebody in high school to be doing that. Joe Thomas. Nice little floater, pass complete, down to the 10-yard line to Al Lapine. Well, we're sensing a pattern here. Joe Thomas consistently is getting the running back, or excuse me, the quarterback, right there. Wow, we're going to start to add up. All the same, he completes the pass. And this offense is moving towards Three points right here with this field goal attempt. Ben Raymaker attempt the field goal. Ben Raymaker will attempt the field goal. 28 yarder on the way. And it is good. So that extends Benominee's lead now to 10 to nothing. I'll be working till the sun goes down to spend the time another dollar bound. Sun goes down. There's no way to describe the kind of risk a small business owner takes. 
but there is a way to ensure it. Rural Mutual. We understand what's at stake. Gonna be here, no matter how long. Till the sun goes down. Farming is hard work. Long hours, and a bit unpredictable. But today, producers are putting together a cooperative system that's helping them reduce risk and get more from everything they produce, making it a little easier for them to greet each new day with confidence. Impressive drive that they put together coming out of the locker room at halftime. Really responded well. They didn't get a touchdown, but they did get three points, adding, their, adding to their lead. And it uh, took a fake punt to get the three points on the board. Oh, and it worked. They, they certainly had it all set up. Brookfield Central set back to return. Didn't have anybody within 20 yards. It took a return man coming up to make the, make the stop until they can get the first down. Let me ask you this. With uh, all the tricks Menominee has pulled out of its bag, what does that do to Brookfield Central right now? Because just about anything they've tried has worked. Yeah. Uh, for Brookfield Central, you've got to clean it up on your own side. You can't worry about the other team. Good return by Doble as he gets it up to the 40-yard line. So he does his job on the special team's return putting his team in good field position. Right now, if I'm Brookfield Central, I'm on offense. I'm not going to worry about what the other team's doing. Just do what you practice doing. Go back to your bread and butter and what got you here. Stop shooting yourself in the foot with penalties and turnovers. Put a drive together. Luke Coleman in at quarterback. Gives the handoff off to Strickland. Tackled right away by number eight from Menominee, Paul Henderson, with the tackle. And they pull Joe Thomas, the two guards, they pull them both. He gets a kick out, they curl up in there. Nice tackle there by Paul Henderson. There's Joe Thomas now playing on offense. end as well as defensive end. And at times, he's in. And that pass is broken up. Jay Thompson, number 21, steps in front of it. Excellent coverage. Never loses track of the ball and knocks it away at the last second. Good protection. Would have been a tough catch. You see him get that ball up there just enough to knock it away. We talked about uh, Joe Thomas off the top with the change of uniforms when he does actually play the tight end and slide down from that guard position on the offensive line. They switch uniform numbers generally to 92. I guess in that semifinal game against Verona, he switched four or five times. And the dead ball foul. Delay a game on the Lancers pushes them back five. Nothing's been easy today. Let's go down to Bob Brainerd on the field, Bob. Oh, you're talking about Joe Thomas. He has already made official visits to Colorado, Nebraska, and Virginia Tech. He's got two more to go. 
He's been at Wisconsin games. He's been at Notre Dame games. He's also being considered by Iowa, Minnesota, Northwestern, Purdue, and Southern Cal. All heavy hitters trying to get a heavy hitter. Well, I tell you what, you can move on that defensive line. Comes the rush. Holman. He's looking for his own tight end, Ryan Schweiker, but. Uh, couldn't come up with the connection, so it's fourth down. The Lancers will punt it away. They're trying to set up a tight end screen here in the middle of the field. But Menominee, the Indians stay home on defense for it. The defensive line goes up, but the linebackers don't bite. Has to throw the ball away. Ball fumbled, picked up. And Dan Swanson will be taken down at the... 33 yard line. That's where the Indians will take over when we come back. 5.05 to go here in the third quarter. And, uh, I'll take one of those things. Parisian mocha flake? Yeah. It's round. It's flat. Round, my queen. How dare you challenge me? Learning today is a lot different. No. Milwaukee Public Schools opens up a whole new world of opportunities. At Community Learning Center, you can get help with homework, learn new job skills, and explore all kinds of fun activities. To round out your education, call 475-7252. Community Learning Centers. Times have changed. Thank goodness. Hey, settle down. Now, don't worry. If Keyshawn Johnson said he'll be here, he'll be here. We'd like to welcome in a guy who always finds time to be on the show, Keyshawn Johnson. Back in Madison, or Mr. Everything, Joe Thomas has really been a force across that defensive line for the field central. Little pressure there with the sack. Chasing him down right here, getting some help from his friends. They cannot block him with a running back. Watch him throw this man, 205 pounds, like a rag dog. He has been a force, but his team is down by 10 points. It has been tough going offensively for Central. They have done really a decent job against Benomini, holding them to 10 points at this point. The quarterback keeper by Pysik. They like to run that play, just drop back and then run on the run. Yeah, give the quarterback, a, or give the play a little time to develop, and the quarterback steps back and finds the hole and just hits it. It's worked well for him today. Menominee unbeaten on the season, running a perfect record in the state at 13 and 0. Pitch back, Hickox crosses the 40, still on his feet. Keeps those lights moving forward and picks up the first down. Well, they just keep coming at you. Once you think you got them down, they just keep bouncing back. They don't hurt themselves. They have one penalty on the whole day. They're not afraid to take chances, gamble a little bit. And today it's paid off. Nice stretch play to the left. First and ten, back to pass. And it's complete to Jason Wagner. Good toss, nice catch. Well, earlier in the game we saw a sign by a fan holding party on Wags. He's working his way towards it right now. Excellent protection up front. No pressure whatsoever. They find an answer for Joe Thomas. And Jason Wagner makes a good adjustment on the ball. Tough catch. First and 10 at the 37 at Brookfield Central. 
It's about three, maybe four. And how many Indian fans bundled up, warm, cheering? Hello. <laughs> Is that really a camera? <laughs> Second down and six for the Indians. Going the other way this time to Dan Swanson. He's close to another first down. Maybe just a little bit short. Run a bit of a reverse on this play. They bring him through in motion. He gets to the outside. He does turn that corner. Picks up some nice yards off the right side. Stopped just short of the first down. That's third and one. Hickox, no problem getting the first down inside. The 25 down at a 23 yard line. So Menominee starting to roll here. They've had a couple of good drives in the second half. They came up with the field goal. And now things are rolling for the Indians. Until Brookfield Central is a little bit back on their heels right now defensively. So Thomas picks it up. And Thomas has it, and it looks like Brookfield Central. And the official word is it's Lancer football. Look at Thomas Battleri says, you know what? I've got it. And I'm gonna be trying to get a little too fancy, running a little bit of a double reverse here. And the ball off one way, it comes back the other way. In that second exchange, that's when it's fumbled. Just when you think they're going to start pushing it and pounding it down their throat, putting some more points on the board, they make a crucial mistake. There's the first handoff. There's the second. Open up your arms and let the ball come into you. Big mistake. First down at 10 for Brookfield Central to 25. Stumbles ahead to the 29. And no matter what's happened so far in this game, it's still a 10-point game. And there's plenty of time for either team to run away with this. Well, we talked about some of the exotics that uh, Joe Labuda's club was running. It was, uh, you know, early in the first half, no score up by seven. Try it here or there, but uh, now it becomes crunch time here late in the third. As you mentioned, Jamie, only a 10-point advantage. Brookfield Central needs to capitalize and can't do it right there as Luke Coleman runs into that defense again and it's penetration by the Indians. Well, Luke did a nice job just picking up a couple extra yards because he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. If he goes down where he's headed, it's a loss. It would have been a sack. He's able to keep some strength and keep his legs moving and get himself a couple yards, bringing on a third and four. One thirty to go in the third quarter. Holman back to pass. Has to let it fly and way out of bounds. He felt the pressure coming from Menominee's Trevor Howard. One of their senior captains right up the middle. Luke's got to be able to see that coming. They can't block everybody when it's a blitz. Here it comes. Right there. Takes another big shot right in the chest. Fair catch called by Hickox at the 25-yard line. And so with 1.12 to go in the quarter, it's going to be Menominee football once again. And so Brookfield Central cannot capitalize on the turnover. Running out on the field, Grant Pysik, the quarterback for Menominee. Let's look at our total yards. Menominee 118 on the ground, 148 through the air for 266. Just dominating on the statistical board. Only 10 to nothing, though, where it counts. That's 
on the scoreboard, and how about this? Is it another oh, fumble or not? It is. Brookfield Central comes up with a football. Number 44, Andy Doble well, makes the recovery. As much as the Indians have dominated this game, they have completely lacked the ability to shut the door on the Lancers. They keep giving them opportunities here. Last two series, they've covered. Now, Brookfield, I don't remember the last time they had the ball with this this good a field position at any point in this game. Nice run, good blocking. There's the ball, the ball is stripped right there. There's a big play by Strickland again. Picks up the first down as he gets down to the 22. Nice job getting that, that ball stripped out of there on that last play by Steve Johnson, number 62. He's a linebacker, senior linebacker. And just as he was going down, he got a hand in there and ripped the ball free. And now there's some life on the Lancer sideline. Strickland again, nowhere to go this time. And right away to make the stop, Shea Schmisky of Benominee. There it is, just trying to run off their left tackle. And it's just one on one beating the block. Second down, 12. Strickland again. Nowhere to run. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Barely. And they're right, barely. And he had to his way back there. That was a tough run just to get back to the line of scrimmage. And time winds down in the third quarter. And it's going to be third down and 12 for Brookfield Central. When we start the fourth quarter, they'll switch sides at Camp Randall Stadium. End of three, Menominee up, 10 zip. forget man this is the nfl show and the nfl is hardcore so we must stay hardcore That's right you know tom you've been out here the longest you got to make sure that uh you know me and michael don't get caught up in that hollywood stuff you know you can count on me but you guys fall off the wayside just let me know man mike i think i'm going to get the uh either the polish or the, or the clear no no just just get a nice buff hey guys how about a bikini wax nick Ooh. the nfl show with urban syracuse and davidson saturday and sunday on fox sports net Cougars can smell the roses, but they want more. For the Huskies, an upset makes their season. Before there's more, Northern Illinois looks for revenge after last season's collapse. Toledo's ready to dish out a rude reminder. Oh, College Football Saturday, presented by Kyocera on Fox Sportsnet. Well, the NBA returns to Fox Sports Net Monday night. The Milwaukee Bucks travel to Phoenix to take on the Suns. Trying to snap a personal 14-game losing streak in Phoenix to the Suns. Coverage begins here on Fox Sports Net at 8 o'clock. Menominee 10, Brookfield Central nothing. We are ready to start the fourth quarter from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, the Division II. WIAA football championship. Third down and 12. Holman back to pass. And this one is complete. Nice job by Nick. Aliota coming back to the football. The ball's underthrown a little bit. He breaks his route off and comes back to it before it can hit the ground. And now they have something going. Well, they sure do. And this is uh, by far Brookfield Central's deepest penetration into Indian territory so far in this football game. Now can they seal the deal? There goes Strickland, touchdown, Brookfield Central, and a late play coming in. 
Strickland had just crossed the goal line and that flag came flying from the backfield. And if you look at Brookfield Central's players, they say it's Al Menominee, but we're waiting for the official call. And it is Al Menominee. Nice blocking. Seals off the end. He makes a good cut inside there. A little bit of over pursuit. And just like that, Brookfield Central's right back in this game. It's gone back and forth with each team giving the other team opportunities. It's up to the fourth quarter for Brookfield to get on the scoreboard. Dan Sturgill in for the extra point. It's on the way and it is good. So Brookfield Central making it a game finally on the scoreboard within three now at 10 to seven. They keep things going at the end of the day. They take us into the sky. They keep us moving and keep us safe. They save lives. They create what we see. They create what we use. They keep us informed. They show us the way. They show us the world. They show us the future. They are graduates of Wisconsin Technical Colleges. Where would we be without them? Stop and visit the people you trust, the friendly, knowledgeable staff at Kai Chevrolet. If you're looking for a new Chevrolet or Oldsmobile, or if you prefer one of our GM certified or quality pre-owned vehicles, You'll enjoy your experience at Kai Chevrolet. Whether searching for the perfect vehicle or keeping your vehicle in top condition at our complete service center. We've been here for over 55 years and we'll be there in North Menominee. Feel Kai Chevy and old. Yes, we can. The 2003 Jeeps have arrived at Chilton Motors. On road, off road, any road, a Jeep will take you there. Now is an exciting time to purchase a new Grand Cherokee with a $2,500 rebate or 0% financing for 60 months. Enjoy the performance of the Jeep Liberty with a $1,000 rebate or financing as low as 0%. Discover an American legend and become part of the tradition and heritage of Jeep at Chilson Motors. Field Central gets on the board. We've got a ball game at the Division II State Football Championship as we take a look at stats now through the last touchdown by Strickland. And you can check it out. Menominee dominating on the first downs, the rushing yards, the passing yards, the total yards. But it's the turnovers that turn out to be a key. And finally, Brookfield Central cashes in. Three turnovers right there. And on the other side of it for Brookfield Central, there. Their Achilles heel has been their ability to give themselves some nice penalties and to stop their momentum on that last drive. They played it clean, put the ball in the end, end zone. And good special teams tackle. Dan Swanson not going anywhere as number 22 Dan Sturgill comes up with a tackle. Let's check in with Bob Rayner. Hey, Craig, Menominee, may, they have not been in games like this this close at all this season. In the Big Rivers, they rolled through their conference. In the regular season, they outscored their opponents 354 to 61. They got through their conference and regular season play with relative ease. No ease in this title game today. Boy, not at all. And they may have gone to a, a bag of tricks too often or got a little too cute there in the second half and allowed Brookfield Central really allowed them to get back in this game, Jamie. Yeah, they had it. They had it. Yeah. Central gave them every opportunity to close the door on this game, and they just didn't take it. Instead, they'd put the ball on the carpet, giving the Lancers an opportunity to put some points on the board and make this a ball game. Pickhawks. See that fired up defense by Brookfield Central. Not only was that fumble painful because it put some points on the board, but now you gave the Lancers some confidence. And now you got some new energy over there on their side of the ball. Third down and seven from their own 27 for the Indians. Early fourth quarter, three-point game. The 
Division II championship on the line. The nominee of Brookfield Central. Heiss it back to pass. As his man. The reception is made at the 45-yard line. And a big one to Jason Wagner. Big catch. Coming through and making a play. If they don't make this catch, they got to kick this ball away and give it back to an excited Lancer team. Instead, they give them excellent protection. Nobody's even close to the quarterback. Nice catch. Nice job going up and getting this ball and not waiting for it to come to you. And Wagner's having a nice game. He sure is. First and ten from there at the 45. So Brookfield Central, let's see how much energy they have left in the tank now after getting fired up, getting within three points. They gave up a big first down on third and long. Passing numbers, one, one touchdown and one interception on the Back to pass again. Nowhere to go, so he wisely throws this one out of bounds. Right takes pass. Didn't have anybody deep, and the short men were covered. Smart decision. And on the rush for Brookfield Central. Well, here we go. We have another third and long. The last time they looked up to Wagner to get the first down and move the chains. Nine minutes, 26 seconds left in the game. Another big play trying to convert on this third and long. Isaac, the handoff. Hickox breaks free. Picks up the first down. Cuts back in the middle of the field. He could go. Down to the 10, 5. Touchdown, Menominee. What a run. Excellent run, avoiding guys cutting back against the grain. There's a Brookfield Central player down on the ground, and he's in pain. We have an injured player on the field. That. Watch this ball sell. He sells this. There's the draw right there. Seal off Joe Thomas on the end. Wide open, and he cuts back against the grain. And you know, outruns all the per everybody out there. Outruns the pursuit to the end zone. Big play. Gives him a little breathing room. And there you see the injured player, number 20, Ryan Becker. From Brookfield Central. And he was in pain. Well, a 53-yard run. It's uh, takes a back seat at this point right now to find out about the injury to Ryan Becker. And quickly, he was uh, in pain near midfield, and the uh, trainers came out to take care of him, and they're still attending to him on the field there, and we're going to take a uh, timeout while they attend to him. Just over nine minutes to go in the ball game, and Benomini out in front, 16 to 7. Increase the safety and security of your home with savings from the dark. A multi-purpose fire extinguisher by Tita is $13.99 after $5 rebate. This combination smoke and carbon monoxide alarm with voice warning is $19.99 after rebate. And dramatic timers are great for security lighting or holiday decorations. This indoor timer is $3.46. An outdoor timer, $6.95. Switch on the savings at Menards. Save big money at Menards. <laughs> Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you win. And sometimes you find yourself at the bottom of a pile of guys who haven't showered in a few hours. In which case, it'd be nice if they'd be good sports and got off. The WIAA Sportsmanship Award. You gotta be good to get it. Man, that's so awesome, hanging out in the hot tub with Derek Fisher. Thanks for having me over, Don. I do for you. Maybe you can do for me sometime. That's right. Hey, why don't you be on my show next week? You know what? That'd be superb. <laughs> <laughs> Back 
in Madison. Good to see Ryan Becker go off on his own power. And here's a look at what happened on that uh, injury at midfield. There you see he's going to get rolled up from behind by his own man right there. Turf, very different from grass. He's not able to pull his legs out of there. Hopefully it's nothing serious. See the season numbers on Ryan Becker. And a big touchdown run by this man, Hickox, for the Menominee Indians at 53 yards. And they're waiting now to put on the uh, extra point attempt for Joe Labuda's club. And if they do, they did a fine job of uh, quickly answering Brookfield Central's touchdown and turning a three-point game back into a ten-point lead. Yeah, there was a big lull in the scoring in the middle, but all of a sudden we've had each team put a touchdown on the board. It's a prize fight, each team giving each other some slugs. The point is good, so that makes it Menominee 17, Brookfield Central 7. That's our score here in the fourth quarter of the Division II Championship. One more to go, the big one in Division One. Coming your way at 4 o'clock here on Fox Sports Net. Marshfield returning to defend its championship against Heartland Arrowhead. Two state powers ready to lock horns in Division One. Reason to celebrate. There is reason to celebrate over on Menominee's side. They have uh, they have been up throughout this ball game. It has been close. Brookfield Central has been knocking, knocking, and finally got into the end zone on their last offensive series to make it a 10-7 game, but Menominee answers a wonderful run by Brady Hickox of 53 yards, and Menominee extends its lead back to 10 at 17-7. So they are set to kick off. The Lancers are set to receive. Still have a lot of time left in this one, though. 9-11 to go. taken by Doval and he makes the return up to the 35 yard line and that's where the Lancers will take over first to 10. Let's see if they can put two drives back to back and put some more points on the board. Last time they had the ball they took it down the field put a nice drive together and ended up with the touchdown first score of the game for him. Start on the center, and he double snapped it. Those little problems have haunted the Lancers from the beginning of this game. Yeah, the, you're right. The little things, the basics, the things that you should have right from day one. Center quarterback exchange has been a major issue for them today. First down at 15 now from the 30. They wait for the play call to come in. Again, those little things that uh, have hurt Brookfield Central along the way. Still in position to overcome those mistakes. They need a score here. They need a good drive. Need to answer Menominee. The Indians prove they could answer the Lancers. These are the little things right here that have kept them behind. Some miscues, fumbled snaps. And that's one, that's two. Here we go, a nice run and then a fumble on the way down. The ball gets stripped. The blocking up front jumps in the air and it gets pulled out. Almost loses that one. Loose handle on that one. Back to live action, Holman back to pass. Second and 12. And we have a flag coming in. <laughs> I almost think it's going to be interference against Menominee. This one's going to be on Jay Thompson, number 21. Had too much of the back of the jersey. Had his left arm wrapped around the receiver. Holding is going to be the official call against the Indians. 
Penalties now playing a role for both teams. That's going to be an automatic first down for Brooks Brookfield Central. When they would have had to go on a third and one. Word from the sideline, Ryan Becker, a sprained ankle. Of course, the first thing you think about, artificial turf, bent over backwards is the knee, so. Well, they're looking at the ankle, so. Hopefully it's just a sprain and not a break. Second down and one after the penalty. And Strickland cuts it back up the middle, picks up the first down for Brookfield Central, so their drive stays alive. They overcome their own penalty and use a Menominee penalty to pick up the first down. Brookfield uh, Central hasn't done anything fancy. It's just been based here games. Running and throwing the ball, no trickery. to John Doble, a yard, maybe two. And he's stopped by Paul Henderson right in the hole. Big strong physical tackle. That's Paul Henderson, number eight, not Paul Henderson, number 67. He's the guy that switched the jerseys and threw one of the option taxes. <laughs> Gotta see Joe Thomas switch that jersey up before this one's over. Live up to his billing in the championship game. Well, it's kind of tough to put him out of tight end when he throws blocks like he did on that last play. Oh, that's a on that last very play. good point. Kicked out his man and put him on the ground. Right now, that's what you need first and foremost. If you get that kind of blocking, someone else will catch the ball. Watch him fall here, number 61. You'll see it at the very end. He just gets underneath and takes him out. Third down and four near midfield. Flags come flying in, whistle stops play. And a false start on the Lancers. Boy, that's not what they needed on third and four. There's a shot upstairs of Rick Seinel, the head coach of Brookfield Central. And the rare times a head coach will get off that sideline and go up to the press box. Third down and nine. And here we go again. You know, if, I, if I'm the head coach right now, I'm calling down to my offense coordinator and telling him everything's on one. Nothing is going to change. No more motion. Clean it up. Let's go back to the basics and go on one for the rest of the game. This is ridiculous. One more shot upstairs, Jamie. You know, the only time we were talking about this, have we ever seen this before? It's when Barry Alvarez had the uh, knee replacement right. and couldn't stand on the sideline a couple of years ago. He was up in the press box. Didn't really enjoy it, but did say it does offer you a different example. Look at those penalty penalty guys. Nine yeah. for 61 for Brookfield Central. And most of those are on the offense, stopping big drives. Big catch over the middle, first down. And Brookfield Central comes up with the big play to Nick Aliota. Third down and 14 and over the middle. And a nice run after the catch. Nice protection. He's going to get a guy in his face right here as he throws the ball. Stands in there tough, takes the hit, delivers a strike. A nice catch down the middle. Tries to make a cut there to break away and gets caught from behind. Nice play by the Lancers. Way to battle back, fight that adversity. You're shooting yourselves in the foot by getting those penalties back to back to back. And you come back and pick up the first down anyway. And Brookfield Central will call the timeout. 6-12 to go in the ball game. They trail by 10. They have a first down at Menominee's 27-yard line. You know, take a look at the total stats. 351 yards to 175. It's only a 10-point ball game. ACC Sunday Night Hoops returns to Fox Sports Den on December 1st. Temple Owls take on Wake Forest in a showdown between perennial powers. The ACC Sunday Night Hoop package tips off on December 1 right here on Fox Sports Net.
Coleman ready to go. First and ten after the timeout. Hands off to Strickland trying to turn the corner. And he is pulled down by the jersey by Sean Buck. Nice job by the Indians defense stretching this play out, forcing it to the sidelines. And when the running back tries to make his turn, he's dragged down from behind with a handful of shirt. Second down and the 11. Official timeout. Adjusting one of the Indians' helmet. Looks like they're ready to go. Usually the chin strap. It's all about the chin strap, isn't That's it? That's right. Got to have it on. Unless you're Brett Favre. Yeah, he gets away with it, doesn't he? Pass over the middle. And it's incomplete. I think that's a good call by the official. If the ball hit the carpet. Ryan Schweikert, he's trying to sell the officials that he caught this ball, but he definitely did not. Watch it hit the ground here. Boom, it's trapped right there. He just rolls over it. Can't blame him for trying. And again, we have another third and long situation. It's third and 11. And the Lancers do it again on third and long. Holman, quick pass. It's complete. Diving for the first down to his big tight end, Ryan Schweiker. And where are they going to spot it? Looks like it's good enough for the first down. Inside the 16 yard line. It is. Lancers to it again, Jamie, on third and long. Coming up with some nice plays. They're able to sweep, sneak Schweiger out. Down the sideline, they get him the ball, and he does the rest. First and 10 from the 16. Strickland going right once again. Going nowhere once again, thanks to that defense by Menominee. And there's 21, Jay Thompson in to make the stop. Well, the last three first downs in a row, they've ran that toss play to the right. And the last three times in a row, the Indians have stuffed it. So I don't, I don't understand why their tendency is to keep running that play on first down. Good question. Let's change things up a little bit. You can't be that confident in third and long. Pitch back going the other way. And once again, going nowhere. And Strickland on the left side. So, it's third and long. Haven't we been here before? I think we've been here like every <laughs> set of downs here that Brookfield Central has gotten on this drive. Well, they've done a good job on this drive of keeping everything alive They're and down converting in on these third and long situations. No more, no one more important than this one. 11th play of the drive. Third down and 10. Holman back to pass. Here comes the rush over the middle. Intercepted. Well, he has got it. Jake Merritt comes up with the pick. And a nice one at that. And they're jumping on the Menominee sidelines and in the stands. Well, Holman's trying to get the ball to Aliota, and Aliota doesn't turn around to look for it. Nice job by the secondary stepping in front of a receiver and picking this ball off. And we see the key guy right there, 31. But watch this ball. Eliota is thrown well behind him. He's not even looking for it when it's thrown. That ball should have been lobbed up. Yep, you have to wonder if Eliota was he running that route. Nice play by Matt Ford, the defensive tackle. Broke through the line of scrimmage untouched. Gets in the secondary and tackles him for a loss. So at this point, with the ball at the, uh, now the seven yard line, loss of two, Brookfield Central's thinking, you know what, we have a pin deep. Let's use another timeout here. That's your second one of the second half, so they have one left. Let's go down to Bob Rainer. Frank, let's give credit to the Menominee Indians because they came in knowing all about Brookfield Central, not just because of the game they played against them in 1999, but because 
headline makers like Joe Thomas, like Ben Strickland, who rushed for fourth, the fourth most yards in the state. Coach Labuda and his players all knew exactly what they were getting into when they faced the Lancers. They knew that they had some studs. They knew that, he, he said that a guy like Ben Strickland, we don't have guys that are quick enough to be able to keep up with them. But they said, bottom line is, we want to rise to the challenge. We want to play against Joe Thomas. We want to see what it's like taking on a D1 guy. And so far, they're ahead in the scoreboard. That's where it counts. Well, JB, you want to play the best no matter what, especially when it comes down to a title game like this. And I like a team that likes a challenge. Well, you're not going to stop Joe Thomas, but you can try and contain him. Murray he, away from him. he has made some plays, but they've also ran at him a few times and been able to get around the corner on him. A good player is going to stand out in any game. And all you can hope is that your team is better than theirs. And so far in this game, the Indians have been the better team. The Lancers call their final and timeout. The it will be third down and nine. Plenty of time left here in the fourth the quarter, so they like to preserve as much exist. time as possible and then let it play out as, as it may. Well, well now that they did use up their timeouts, what they need to do is they need to get a stop here on this third and long. If they keep them, uh, keep them short of this first down marker, it'll force them to punt the ball, and they should get the ball back with pretty good field position. Do you dare try a pass here if you're a Menominee? I, I don't know what to say about Menominee. They've done some things in this game that I didn't expect <laughs> them to do already, so I'm not even going to That's not a, even going to pretend to guess. That's a, not a bad question on my part, but a great answer. <laughs> you never know. You don't know what you're going to get. Gonna punt it right here. We're going to go with the quick punt. At least that's what it looks like. And Nick Cox does it. And the opportunity to return that one is Menominee slipped through the hands of Nick Aliota. Nick well. did a good job getting back there to try and catch the punt. Now all he's got to do is finish the deal. Look it all the way in. They're still going to get excellent field position. Could have been better. I like that play call by Menominee. That's not really an exotic. That's a smart move. Yeah, a smart call. Why not? If they could have got it off a little quicker, nobody would have been back there. First to 10 at the 45-yard line of Menominee for Homan and company. And the lateral going nowhere. Menominee in hot pursuit. Strickland well, that dropped like they were in the backfield. Throw, throw that pass and, and have him throw five, it from there. Smitsky. But he never even got his eyes up after he caught the ball. Looks like they're trying to set up a double pass right here. They got a blocker out there in front, but... Eight yards. Lost by the play. Second down and 18. Loss of eight. Second and 18. Holman straight back. Dumps it over the middle. Aliota tries to get some of those yards back. Puts his head down. Dives out of bounds. Near the 43-yard line. They've had some success running these intermediate routes across the middle getting guys free and getting some decent yardage it's they still have a little bit of time but not much with three minutes and 12 seconds left you would think they'd have to go up in some type of hurry up offense if they can't get out of bounds here we go third and seven for Brookfield Central here comes the rush, pass over the middle, wide open. He's got his man, it's Schweikert again, into the end zone, touchdown, Brookfield Central, what a play. And just as we mentioned it, going across the middle, these short routes, keep it within 15 yards. Here in the second half, they've had a, they've had a lot of success doing that. And here they go on the next play and do the same thing. And it's a race to the corner pylon. And Schweikart wins it. Nice pass, nice throw, nice cut. Extra point is good. That makes it a 17-14 game. And look out, 3-0-4 to go. Biggest nemesis right now for Brookfield Central, Jamie, is they are down three and no timeouts to try to stop that clock. So they must... 
stop him on downs. Yeah, Menominee's playing with 12 people right now, and the 12th is a clock. Excellent protection, just going across the middle, finding the big target in his tight end. 6'4", 210 pounder. He's a big kid, he's only a junior. Schweikert will be back next year. And he can run, as you saw him out racing. He puts it back all the way to the end zone. Good speed. That fires up the Brookfield Central Band. So here we go. The hands team is out for Menominee. What do you do? Do you boot it or play it short? Try for the onside kick. 3:04 to go. Tough call. Let's kick it deep. You just you just end your defense stop and get in your own territory. Let's try it again. Well, they are lining up. Uh, they are top heavy. Brookfield Central is appearing to try to pull off the onside kick. Seven short hands, yeah. Garrett Miller comes up with it for Menominee. Menominee's got great field position coming off of their 48 yard line. I'll tell you, that's an interesting call. I'm not sure if I just don't go ahead and kick that one deep and play it out. Three minutes is still a long time to go. That's right, I, I agree with you on that one. That's what they're playing for. That second one right there is where everybody wants to take home first choice is that goal ball. Pysik dives ahead to the 50-yard line for two. Division two state football championship. That is a nice looking trophy. Well, going back to that kickoff with the onside kick, what you do is you give them excellent field position with a short clock. Even if you are able to stop them and they kick the ball away, say on a fourth down, now you're deep in your own territory and you've got a big field to work with. Handoff tripped up just past the 45 yard line. And carrying the football that time is Al Lapine for the Indians. So third down and a long three. Clock ticking away. Near two minutes. Big third down for the Lancer defense. Menominee steps up to the line. They need just a little more than three yards to pick up the first down. First man through, and it's going to be very, very close. It's going to be close. They're going to have to bring these sticks out to measure this one. Andy Miller carrying. And this is the territory where they would probably go for it if they are short. Kind of no man's land here for the punting game. It is going to be fourth down. Call it a yard. Well, and also they keep the ball in bounds right in the middle of the field. So as the clock winds down, we're under a minute and 30 seconds here. The play of the year for both these clubs. Menominee, if they can convert, they will win the championship. If Brookfield Central can stop them, one last shot. And it looks like Menominee gets the first down. There it is, number 35, Al Lapine. Jumps out and starts to celebrate. Along with that right there, the Lancers have no timeouts left. They'll just take a minute to finish this game. And end up with that trophy right there. Well, I'll tell you what, they picked that up today. And that's number five for the trophy case. You gotta think about uh, Adding on, <laughs> adding on to the house of hardware. I'm sure they'll find some room for that. Pysik takes the knee. And the celebration begins for Menominee. They'll have to take one more here. Leading 17 to 14. And for the second time since 1999, these two teams hook up and Menominee comes out 
with the championship in Division Two. There's the final knee, and the final 10 seconds will tick away for the Menominee Indians. Congratulations. A perfect season complete with a state championship. 14-0, a 17-14 victory over Brookfield Central. We're coming right back. Thanks. Have a great day. Hi, how can I help you? Like to make a deposit? No problem. and Davidson, Saturday and Sunday on Fox Sports Net. Menominee has won another state championship over Brookfield here in Madison. For Jamie Vanderbilt, Bob Brandon, and our entire Fox Sports Net crew, I'm Craig Kishan, saying so long from Camp Randall, 17-14 Menominee over Brookfield Central. Stay tuned for more WIAA State High School football action coming your way at 4. It's Hartland Arrowhead and Marshfield in Division 1. The WIA High School Football Championship has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net. We now join Big 12 Showcase. Now oh, that'll fix it. And now if I can just find someone I trust to fix my furnace problem. I just don't trust those wild claims I see in the paper. That's why I call the Ring Team. They're different. They were on time, explained the problem, fixed only what needed fixing. Fair price, too. Yeah, right. No, really. Call the Ring Team. Give me that number. In the greater Milwaukee area, call Tom's Dependable Heating and Cooling, Inc. at 414-282-3377. We will impress you when you make that call to the ring team. After you eat a big double chili cheeseburger from Hardee's, save the leftovers. You know chili's even better the second day. The double chili cheeseburger at Hardee's. Napa presents the master technician. Hi, Sam Amolo here. You know, sometimes just getting a grip on a fastener can be a real problem. Tell me about it. Now Napa has the solution. Hey, sport, you, check this out. Try the latest from Gear Wrench. It's the original ratcheting combination wrench, and now it flexes. Bingo! All the way up to 90 degrees. So not only can you reach faster as you couldn't reach before, but with Gear Wrench, your grip won't slip. Under the hood or around the house, Napa's new 57-piece flex gear wrench tool set has everything you need to get tough jobs done fast and done right the first time. And Gear Wrench can turn a fastener with as little as five degrees of movement. A standard wrench needs six times more space. The difference is Gear Force technology, and only Gear Wrench has it. And don't forget, it flexes. The 57-piece Flex Gear Wrench tool set, available exclusively at participating Napa Auto Parts stores and at Napa Online for just $59.99. And for a limited time, save $10 with our mail-in rebate. Napa, we're the pro shop. Who said there's nothing good on TV? You know, his, his upside is remarkable. And for a lot of people, they, they think that's, that's uh, you know, quite a statement. But, you know, it's true. He's, a, he's also probably a better person as a quarterback. So that when you have the whole package like that, it's certainly you know, very positive for our program. 
motivation to become bowl eligible, give you a little bit more of a carrot to put out in front of your team this weekend? Well, I think it is, especially that's the kind of program we want to you know, Our first step for us is to start going to bowls every year, and obviously we have to go to our first one. This is the second year in, in you know, building this. Uh, uh, but I think, you know, the focus has got to be on Kansas State. You know, they're so good that, you know, you can't be thinking about, you know, going to bowls. you got to be thinking about, you know, the process to get to one, and, and that's, and you know, we understand we gotta, we'd got we have to be a great football team. So uh, that's where our focus is, just preparation for Kansas State. Gary, we appreciate the time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Great job here in Missouri. Thank you. Gary Pinkle, the head coach of the Missouri Tigers. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Big 12 Showcase. It's something that we always talk about, you know, going one, two in every race, you know, the Taurus, Taurus combination it's, it's a, it has a sweet uh, sound to it. It's time to show your holiday spirit. Oneida Casino makes it easy when you give to the Holiday Collectibles Food Drive, November 18th through December 15th. Fun Club members receive a game piece for every pound of non-perishable food you donate. Bring in five pounds or more and receive a Snow Buddy ornament, plus four game pieces. Instantly win slot tokens, gaming certificates, surprise holiday gifts, or a $5,000 progressive drawing entry. You could win up to $25,000. Show your true holiday spirit. Give to Oneida Casino's Holiday Collectibles Food Drive. You already know the forecast. Freezing rain, sleet, ice, and snow. What you need is the solution. And Tires Plus has got it. Bridgestone's Blizzak WS50 bikes through the snow and grips the ice thanks to an advanced multi-cell compound. So get to Tires Plus and be ready for this winter season. Whatever you drive, Tires Plus has a Blizzak for it. Tires Plus, home of low, low prices today and every day. Introducing the best of Beavers and Buckhead. I am Cornholio. I need TV for my bunghole. Relive the golden <laughs> moments with the comic masters. Number one, I order you to go take a number two. Oh, Get four complete volumes of the best of Beavers and Butthead on two VHS or two DVDs for only $29.99. I'm like angry at numbers. There's like too many of them and stuff. Call in the next 10 minutes with your credit card and you'll also get Beavers and Butthead's holiday extravaganza. Featuring Butt O Wee. Wee. And Beavers and Butthead do Christmas absolutely free. We guarantee you'll laugh long and hard. Long. Hard. Or we'll refund your purchase price. Yes. This offer is only available right here, so call now. Call 1 800 368 0202 to order Beavis and Butthead for just $29.99 plus shipping. Use your credit card and get a free bonus video. Or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Big 12 Showcase from the University of Missouri. We are at the Gustin Golf Course right next to the campus here at Mizzou. Hi, everyone. Bill Land back with you. This course recently the host site for the Big 12 Cross Country Championships. You might recall Colorado swept the competition. And the Buffs men's and women's teams have both qualified for the national championships. will be decided in Terre Haute, Indiana next Monday. Now, if you take a look at Colorado's men's team, they are an outstanding pick to win it all. Part of the reason, or maybe I should say reasons, it's Ed and George Torrey, the twin brothers for Colorado. The Big 12's been in existence for seven years, and there have been some great sibling stars. These two might be the best. Here's Keith Fletcher. In a sport as anonymous as cross country, it's hard to make a name. But when two guys share the same name, and they're both among the first at the finish line, that name tends to get noticed. Jorge and Eduardo Torres are better known by friends as George and Ed Torre. Three weeks ago, the twin brothers made the ultimate statement of domination in their sport by finishing first and second at the Big 12 Championship. It's something that we always talk about, you know, going one, two in every race, you know, the Torres, Torres combination, it's, it's a, it has a sweet uh, sound to it. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know what else to say besides, uh, it's nice to see my brother up in front and me come right behind him. It's, I'm sure that a lot of people like to see that, especially our family. For George, it was his third straight Big 12 title, also winning the 2000 title in the Buffs home course in Boulder, then winning the 2001 conference race in Norman. Three weeks after that title at OU, George was a front runner at the NCAA championship meet in South Carolina, ultimately finishing second, brother Ed 15th, as CU won the team national crown. 
The Big 12 has seen several successful twins in its time, like the Colorado tennis Beck twins, Anna and Aggie, or the Reeves twins from Kansas, Brooke of basketball and Amanda of volleyball. Perhaps the greatest siblings the league has ever known is the Sanderson trio of Iowa State wrestling.